I cannot stress strongly enough that voters in November face two competing ideologies in the state. The first would institute gun control ostensibly to save children, but would actually protect no one while limiting civil liberties. On the other hand, House Bill 1039 and concepts like it protect school children by deterring active shooters and still institute and still preserve individual liberties. And we hope voters will remember that in November. Gun-free zones are just killing fields for the people who want to do that sort of thing, and we need to um, err on the side of uh, allowing people to defend themselves, if you want to call it an error. Uh, the Second Amendment plainly says, shall not be infringed. And it doesn't say except in this, that, or the other case. It simply says the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And all these laws that we have that make it harder for an honest citizen to be armed are contrary to and violate the Second Amendment. And I've been up here ever since 2011 trying to get us closer back to the Second Amendment and what it really means. And this is just part of it. You know, I think it's a shame that it's become a political battle because I don't think kids' lives should be about policy and politics. We're talking about saving kids' lives. I think that teachers as responsible citizens have the right to keep and bear arms. The responsibility to keep and bear those arms in uh, to defend children in a school, I think, is the highest calling and the greatest responsibility that you can have. And so I feel uh, very deeply that uh, I would be willing to do that, and I know other people that would be as well. Most of you are probably aware I've been uh, advocating for several months now to allow teachers who are willing, we're not going to make anybody do it against their will, be voluntary. Um, teachers who are willing who have concealed carry permits to get tactical training and be able to carry weapons in the school building in order to defend themselves, their co-workers and students in case of a shooting in North Carolina like we've seen in other places. Uh, my main concern in all this is to save lives. But I have a prepared statement that I want to share with you concerning this and uh, I'll make copies available uh, to anyone who would like to have them. The North Carolina Legislature is considering numerous approaches to promoting school safety in the wake of a number of shooting incidents at schools across the country. Better handling of mental health issues, strengthening security measures in school buildings, peer mentoring, and some other ideas have been suggested that are worth considering. There are a lot of pieces to this puzzle. However, there is a very important piece it is already in place in one form or another and is working very well in over 20 states, which has not been given fair consideration in, North Carol in the North Carolina General Assembly. And that is allowing teachers and other school personnel who have concealed carry permits to volunteer to receive proper tactical training and be allowed to bring their own weapons to protect their own lives and the lives of their co-workers and students against an attacker who gets past all the security measures and begins shooting people in a school. House Bill 1039, the School Self-Defense Act, would have allowed this common sense practical solution to be implemented in North Carolina. However, seeking to avoid controversy in an election year, our leadership has chosen not to allow this bill even to be heard in committee. This is a failure to act that I fear may one day cost lives that could have been saved. So I am holding this press conference today along with Mr. Paul Vallone of Grassroots North Carolina and a few other folks who support this idea to try to make the public aware of the need to consider allowing properly vetted teachers and other school personnel to obtain the training that is needed and exercise their right of self-defense so that lives can be saved that would otherwise be lost while they wait for the police to arrive. We are asking law-abiding citizens who know the value of self-defense to contact their legislators and insist that legislation of this sort be given a fair hearing so that our children, teachers, and other school personnel do not have to be left defenseless in the face of an attack. North Carolina should not continue to lag behind 
the more than 20 other states where this is already working. If we fail even to consider this option and children, teachers, and school staff die who might have been saved if we had allowed school personnel to be armed, I do not want to be at fault for that. I do not want that to be my fault. And so I have to run this legislation. Uh, I'm, I hate that it's not being heard. Uh, there is another bill in the Senate. Uh, Senator Warren Daniels and some others have put forward a bill that's similar, does some different things. House, uh, Senate Bill 756, I understand that is also not going to be heard, but I'll let them talk about their bill. Um, but I do have with me today uh, Mr. Paul Valoon and some others, uh, Grassroots North Carolina. Uh, Mr. Valoon, when he found out that I was trying to get something done about this, got together with me and we uh, he helped me put a bill together. It was House Bill 1039, and you can either get that online or we can make a copy available to you if you'd like to look at it. As I say, it's not currently uh, scheduled to be heard, uh, but I'm not giving up because the lives of our kids and our teachers and other school personnel are too important to me to just let it go. So at this time, I'll ask Mr. Blone if he'll come up and speak. Thank you very much, Representative Pittman. Uh, Representative Pittman is a patriot. He is once again doing what many other people in this uh, chamber unfortunately seem the la to lack the will to do. Uh, what you're seeing and what North Carolinians face are two very different and competing ideologies to protect children. We've seen a number of gun control bills introduced purportedly to protect children all of which, however, would restrict the rights of law-abiding North Carolinians. What you see today is the introduction of legislation which will protect children while preserving individual liberties by deterring violent sociopaths from committing crimes in schools. It's a very simple bill that allows faculty members who are concealed handgun permit holders who've had training and background checks to take additional tactical training and then carry concealed firearms to protect their students. This is not a novel concept. According to USA Today, 14 states now have some measure for allowing teachers and other faculty members to carry firearms to protect students. The fact is that unless we, I guess, pass a deterrent sometime very soon, we will likely face the same type of tragedies faced in Parkland and elsewhere. So what we are asking is we are asking people to understand that even if we can't pass this bill this year, voters face a choice in November. The choice will be to protect school children while preserving individual liberty or to pass gun control that purports to protect children but will actually do nothing for school safety and everything to restrict your individual freedoms. To that effect, we'd like to thank the legislators for introducing this bill um, and having the courage to do so. At this point, I would like to introduce Jean Fitzsimmons, a retired educator from Catawba County, who has some thoughts on why we should be allowing teachers to protect their students. Jean? Thank you, good morning. My name is Gene Fitzsimmons. I am a retired teacher from Catawba County, uh, and I am also a retired Marine Corps Captain, Ranger Train, Recon Marine, Vietnam. Uh, I believe that there are many teachers who would want to be armed and want to be in a position to protect their children from any kind of a school shooter. The, I, it, I've discussed this with quite a few of them, and what I've found is I think if you take an approach that says, if I'm sitting there between the door closed at the moment and my students and there's somebody outside the door with a firearm that wants to kill them, I want to be armed. I do not want to be like the football coach at Parkland who gave up his, his life uh, just to shield his students momentarily before his students were gunned down. Uh, I think there are a lot of folks who would want to be that, do that, and uh, that's, uh, as, as, a, as a voluntary basis, many of them, uh, as, that I, in my basic research, uh, have found that would want that. 
I, are there any questions? Mr. Pittman, would you expand on the fact of why you don't believe the leadership is giving your bill any kind of a time or hearing? Well, same reason the Senate's not here in House Bill 746 that the House passed last year, which I got started with House Bill 69. Uh, it's election year, and they're afraid of the controversy. That's, that's my uh, long and short understanding of it. Um, and of course, uh, they consider it controversial. And that, uh, that's something we hear very often when they don't want something to run, it's too controversial. Yet some other things that are controversial get to run. You know? So uh, I, uh, I always respond to that with the question, if you're afraid of controversy, what are you doing in Raleigh? You know, that's the way I feel about that. A lot of things we do are controversial. It's just, um, I guess the leadership has their own ideas about how they want to handle things and they don't want to consider something else. One thing, I will say uh, a difference between Senate Bill 756 that uh, I mentioned earlier and my bill is that um, Senate Bill 50, uh, 756 would um, be paying teachers to do this. And that might be something we want to consider, but with the way uh, we're having s struggles with meeting the school budget as it is, I'm trying to do something that would not add expense to the school the education budget. Um, if there are teachers who want to volunteer. I've been contacted by some who would like to be able to do this. And uh, we even had a police officer from Wake County area who trains police officers in tactical uh, strategies and that sort of thing, uh, who, who does train uh, civilians as well. And he's willing to work with the program uh, to train teachers to do this. So. It's, it's not an unheard of idea. It is already happening in several states. Mr. Blone mentioned 14. I've heard of others that may not have a law specifically saying that you can do this, but they don't have a law against it, and so it's allowed. Um, so, as I say, uh, from what I've been able to determine, there's over 20 states already doing this in some form. And so, um, to me, it's just pretty good common sense. And what it comes down to in the end is if you're that teacher, faced with a shooter. I mean, I don't care what kind of security measures we do and we ought to do those, eventually somebody's going to get around them. And if you're that teacher faced with a shooter coming into your room, then the question is, is the shooter going to die or am I going to die? Or are these kids going to die? And if I were that teacher, I wouldn't be able to say, I'm going to shoot him. You know, he's not taking these kids out and I'm going to do everything I can to protect them. Unfortunately, for instance, uh, at Sandy Hook Elementary, very brave principal there. If she could have stood still and taken aim, she could have taken that guy out instead of running at him unarmed and being shot down and he just keeps on killing kids. I mean, that kind of thing needs to be stopped. And the only way you're going to stop that is with somebody there with a gun to stop the shooter. That's, that's the bottom line. When it comes right down to it, all of the things that we're trying to do in uh, better mental health and all those things are good. They need to be done. But in a moment when that guy's pulling the trigger, it's too late for that. And the teacher needs to be able to defend herself or himself and their students. Representative Pittman? Yes, sir. Uh, just like you want the General Assembly to take up your legislation, do you think that the school safety discussion should include room or have room for discussion about any gun control or gun regulations? I have mixed feelings about that because I would never vote for that. We have too many gun control laws as it is that uh, violate the Second Amendment. and. Uh, do more harm to the right of peaceful citizens to be able to exercise their Second Amendment rights than they actually stop criminals. I mean, this stuff's still happening with all the laws we already have. Uh, so I would never vote for those, but I have often said, and, and don't laugh because I'll never be Speaker, I've often said if I were Speaker, every bill would be heard, period. Um, so yeah, we probably ought to hear those bills, um, but I'd do everything I could to kill them, to be honest with you. Representative Pittman, you mentioned the bill is not scheduled to be heard right now. So what are your plans moving forward with this legislation? Well, what we're doing right here today is trying to raise awareness among our citizens and have them uh, contact their legislators, as I said in my statement, uh, to demand that action be taken along these lines going forward. We may not get it done this year, but just because we don't get this bill done doesn't mean that we stop the effort. Moving forward, people need to be aware. Thank you. Uh, Representative Speciality is one of the primary sponsors on the bill would like to say a word. Uh, there, there's absolutely nothing in this bill that mandates anything. It doesn't mandate that the schools do it. It doesn't mandate that the teachers 
carry, what it does is it allows it. It takes the state out of the position of telling the local school districts what's best for their kids. And it lets the local school boards make those decisions. How they make those decisions would be up to them. Uh, carrying in the classroom, probably not a smart idea, but possibly putting it in a lockbox somewhere and having teachers who can access that box uh, might be an option. How they work it out, how they do it, should be up to the local school districts and not up to the state. Uh, this is a good bill. We've got to stop, uh, we've got to start thinking outside the box. There isn't enough money in the state to pay to have enough, as many uh, uh, school resource officers as you would need to protect all of the schools. It's just not there, no matter what we do. Uh, but we've got to look for ways to protect our kids. That's what it's about. We need to, we need to get, quit being squeamish. We need to quit uh, uh, worrying about political correctness. And we need to start looking at how do, we, how do we save our kids? How do we keep them safe? And the way to keep them safe is if some, all the things that the school safety committee did, and I'm, and I'm on that committee, and I think we, done, we did a great job. There's a lot of good things in the five or six bills that we're putting forth. But a lot of that stuff is to try and prevent something from happening. But once we get to the point where something is happening, somebody needs to be in that school to be able to stop it. And you can Google, if you haven't done so already, Google it and find out just how many times there have been school shootings in the past where it has been stopped by somebody who did have a gun. And in many cases, had it illegally in their car in the parking lot, vice principals or teachers that ran out to their cars and got their guns and protected and, and, and stopped the carnage. That's what needs to be done. Somebody needs to be there to stop the carnage. Again, there, isn't, there aren't enough law enforcement officers uh, uh, available to do this. A lot, of them, uh, a lot of good folks in law enforcement, but let's be honest, okay, standing around in a school all day is not exactly the best position to be in if you're looking to further your career in law enforcement. So there's other options available. There are, you know, we, we allowed the sheriffs a couple of years ago to uh, be able to appoint a former military policemen and retired law enforcement for specifically for this purpose. This is just gives the schools another option. I know teachers who are willing to, to carry. I know teachers uh, who can out shoot folks on the, uh, anybody in law enforcement. They go to the range every week or every two weeks. There's a lot of good people out there willing to do this. This is a good bill. I think it, 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 it's, it does nothing more than allow the uh, local citizens to, to make their own decisions in their own districts. And, I, and I, I just think it should hit the floor, and I think it, it, it should be supported by everybody in the state. I have a question. The bill mentions uh, some requirements such as 16 hours of active shooter training, mm -hmm. and it also talks about some schools being able to opt out. So how do you envision this working? Um, well, obviously, if the school uh, system does not want to do this, we're not going to force them to do it. We just wanted to make it available as an option that could be uh, chosen to, to help with this situation. As for the 16 hours, some people may think that's not enough. I'd like Mr. Malone to address that issue. <clears throat> what I'd like you to consider is that this bill is patterned after the highly successful program by the Department of Homeland Security called the FFDO program. And the FFDO program allows certain volunteer pilots who undergo training to fly armed with the intention of defending the cockpit. Like the FFDO program, and unlike Senate Bill 756, we do not intend to give teachers powers of arrest or broad authority. Um, in fact, giving them powers of arrest, forcing them to get involved in altercations other than active killer scenarios actually compromises the integrity of the program because we don't want the active shooter to know who the guardians are until frankly his knowledge is a moot point. So the bottom line is that we have simplified this by removing uh, powers of arrest and removing law enforcement functions <coughs> beyond the immediate defense of students in a classroom for which 16 hours of active shooter training is, in fact, more than adequate. In fact, uh, you know, as I said, some of these federal programs, you see law enforcement officers only getting seven days of training, and they have much more com comprehensive scenarios to address. So 16 hours of active duty training in addition to the eight hours that would be required for a concealed handgun permit uh, and training both in firearms and uh, in laws governing use of deadly force and laws governing use of the concealed handgun permits should provide people more than adequate means 
to protect students in the classroom. Thank you. There was a poll earlier this year that said that an overwhelming percent of teachers didn't think this was a good idea, arming teachers is a good idea. So how do you know this would be effective if most teachers don't want it? I saw a report on two polls. One said 20%, the other said 30 So we'll just agree at 20% being willing to do this. They're all we're talking about. The 80% that don't want to do it are not effective. They don't have to do it if they want to. Don't want to. We're not making it mandatory. We're allowing it. I did, there was a newspaper uh, a while back when I was talking about this that ran a cartoon against me where I'm handing out a thing that said, uh, you know, force teachers to do this or something. That's not the idea. The idea is to allow those who are willing. The others who are not willing don't have to do it. In fact, if you don't want to handle a gun, I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> and who's liable if a teacher shoots another faculty member or a student can I, can who isn't caring? Can I answer something to your first question first before we get on to that? Okay. Um, let's assume for a moment that uh, that 20 to 30 percent of students of, of teachers would actually have said that they would consider doing something like this. You do realize that is actually twice the rate of concealed handgun permit holders in the general system. We have about nine or ten percent of our citizenry who carry concealed handguns. That means this is twice as popular among faculty members as is as it is among the general public. As far as liability, I guess the school board takes that on when they approve allowing this to happen in their schools. Um, and I was assumed they would have some insurance for that, that sort of thing. Um, my problem is, I personally, if I didn't put forth this effort, I would feel uh, personally at fault for not giving them the opportunity to defend themselves. And so, um, whether that's a legal liability or, or just liability before the Lord and the public, um, that's a liability that I don't want. I want these people to be able to defend themselves if they so choose. Representative Pivot, what, what's your sense of how receptive law enforcement agencies would be would, would be to the legislation? It will be mixed. Uh, I mean, the uh, uh, Sheriff's Association, I'm sure, will probably not be in favor of this, uh, that sort of thing. But I don't work for them. I work for the citizens whose lives I'm trying to protect. Okay. If that's it, I appreciate your attention, and uh, I'll say there are copies of my statement available if you'd like to have one. Thank you so much for coming, and I appreciate those who come to support.